Hello to everyone here on Reading Zone. I'm Annalise Gray and I'm the author of the Circus Maximus historical adventure series about a young horse-mad girl called Dido who dreams of being the first girl to race chariots at the Circus Maximus, the greatest sporting track in the ancient world. There are two books in the series so far, uh, Race to the Death, this one, in which we meet Dido for the first time, and also her beloved horse, Porcellus, with whom she has a special bond. And then we see Dido's troubles begin as she has to leave Porcellus, flee her home, and go into hiding from a dangerous man whose crime she has witnessed and who therefore wants her dead. All the time, though, Dido never gives up on her dream of becoming a charioteer. And now there's a sequel as well, Rivals on the Track, in which we meet Dido and Porcellus again, and we find her this time facing a new set of challenges. There are old enemies still trying to hunt her down, and she also learns a shocking secret about her family, which is going to force her to decide whether to risk coming out of hiding and return to the racetrack in order to help them. And there's also a fantastic new horse uh, in this book, uh, a one-eyed mare called Jewel, who is every bit as brave as Dido herself. Um, both the Circus Maximus books are full of adventure, full of action, and hopefully make you feel as though you're right there beside Dido in the world of ancient Rome. Because I think that's one of the great things about reading historical fiction. The best examples really make you feel as though you're escaping into a different world. So when writing the Circus Maximus books, I'm always trying to paint a really detailed picture of that world for you. So you can jump into it like a painting and feel as though you're actually there. Uh, I do a lot of research using ancient sources to find out about things like what kind of equipment the charioteers wore to protect them during a race, uh, what kinds of names the Romans gave their racehorses, how big the Circus Maximus was compared to a modern sports stadium. And I do other sorts of research too, like uh, reading Roman recipe books to find out the kind of food Dido would have eaten and looking at evidence from archaeology that tells us what plants and crops would be growing in the landscape around where she lives. And I do that so that you can imagine you're tasting the same food as her and breathing in the same scents in the air as she is. I'm going to read you a little extract from Rivals on the Track, the second book in the series and this is where Dido meets Jewel for the first time, the horse I mentioned earlier, who until now has been a cavalry horse in the Roman army and Dido sees her owner, a soldier, trying to sell her to the owner of a cargo ship. The sailor rubbed his chin, looking critically at the one-eyed mare. Then he took out a pouch, counted some coins and gave them to the soldier, who accepted them greedily. He stroked the chestnut on her back. See you, old girl. We had some great runs, didn't we? Be good, Jewel. He gave her another pat, then walked away, counting the money in his palm. The mare turned, and with her good eye, watched him go. A mournful sound of protest escaped her. I stared after the soldier in disbelief. How could anyone do that? Sell the horse that had saved his life and abandon her like that? The sailor took hold of the mare's rope and peered at her disfigured face with his flinty eyes. Circus horse, what a joke. Sicily, that's the place for you, ugly beast. They always need horses to work in the mines there. He tried to lead her down to the boat, but the mare resisted. When the sailor swore and pulled harder, she tugged herself free and took off along the quayside. I dropped the basket where I stood and ran after her. Dock workers were trying to grab her trailing rope, but she dodged round them, her hooves skipping like a deer's. The soldier hadn't lied. She was lightning fast, despite only having half her sight. At the end of the port, she rounded a corner and disappeared. It took me a long time to find her in Utica's warren of side streets. An upturned souvenir stall gave me my first clue, followed by a woman complaining about her ruined laundry, and then some children gabbling about a one-eyed demon horse. 
Eventually, I found the chestnut, skulking at the end of a deserted alleyway. She was sipping filthy water from a puddle, and she lifted her head as she saw me, snorting warily. It's all right, I said, moving very slowly, keeping my voice as soothing as I could. Yes, I know. You've had a nasty time, but you can trust me. The mayor stared at me in suspicion. I hope you really, really enjoy reading Dido's adventures and thank you so much for joining me here on Reading Zone.